Welcome to Electron Line, and in this video we're going to show you the subtle differences between the different limassons that you can draw. So here we have r equals 1 plus 2 times the cosine of theta. Here we have r equals 1 minus 2 times the cosine of theta. Here we have 1 plus 2 times the sine of theta and 1 minus 2 times the sine of theta. So what do they look like? So we've done one video before where we had something that looked like this, and so let's go ahead and redraw that a little bit more quickly this time. So we have some basic tables, uh, table of values here. So for different angles of 0, 60, 90, 135, and 180 degrees, what is r equal to in that case? So we can see that in the case of r uh, theta being 0, the cosine of theta is 1, twice the cosine of theta is 2, and 1 plus 2 times the cosine of theta is 3. So then we know that for an angle of 0 degrees, the distance from the origin is 3, 1, 2, 3, so we have a point right there. At 60 degrees, it's equal to 2. So at 60 degrees right here, the distance is 2. At 90 degrees straight up, the distance is 1. And at 135 degrees, it's 0. So we go all the way around like this. And then we can see that 135 degrees, it would be equal to 0. That would be coming around this way. And then finally, at 180 degrees, pointing this way, it's minus 1, which means that it comes around like this. All right, so there's the initial graph. If we then continue that, we can see that because of symmetry, it will look like this. And come around through here, coming around through here, and then back over here. So that's a typical limousine. Now, probably I should have used a different color, so let me go ahead and redraw that right next to it using some purple so you can highlight a little bit so you can see that this is what it looks like. There, that's a typical limousin for r equals 1 plus 2 times the cosine of theta. In the later video, we'll see how when you change these numbers relative to each other, how they will actually change the overall shape. But what does it look like when r, of r equals 1 minus 2 times the cosine of theta? Well, notice when the angle is 0, r is negative 1. So we're pointing in this direction, r equals negative 1, which puts us right there. When we're pointing at an angle of 60 degrees this way, it is equal to 0, so then uh, 0, that puts us right there. If we point at an angle of 90 degrees, it is equal to 1, so that would be equal to there. And then at 135 degrees, it's equal to 2, so that would be over here. And at 180 degrees, it's equal to 3. So notice it actually takes this and turns it completely around the other way. It's kind of like a mirror image, so you can see that this would look like this. And then if we complete it, then completing it would look like this. We'd come around like this, like that, and like that. So you can see that if we have 1 minus 2 times the cosine of theta, it takes the limousin and completely flips it over into this direction. So what do you think we're going to get when we have 1 plus 2 times the sine of theta? Some quick checks can help us. At 0 degrees, we get equal to 1. So at 0 degrees, we get a 1, so that would be right there. At 90 degrees, sine of 90 is 1, that would give us 2, plus 1 is 3, so at 90 degrees, we're over there. At 180 degrees, we're back to 0, so that would be right there. So you can see that if you look at that general shape, you can then see that we come around like this, and around like this and around like that. So it takes the whole limousin shape and turns it 90 degrees in this direction, so it looks like this. And then finally, when we have 1 minus 2 times the sine of theta, it basically flips the whole thing over in the other direction, and so we'll get something that looks like this. Like that. And so now you can see the basic shapes are still there no matter which equation you have, but it does mean that if it's 1 plus versus 1 minus, it will flip it from there to there, and here for the sine, 1 plus and 1 minus, it'll flip it from there to there. Notice also that this number is bigger than this number, which gives us this little loop in there. If this number becomes bigger than that, the little loop inside will disappear, and I'll show you what that looks like in some future videos. But at least it gives you a basic idea of how the various forms of that equation cause the limousin shape to change in direction uh, for sine and cosine and in direction for the plus or minus sign as well. And that's how we do that.